pick the wrong weight and quit sniffing glue. Welcome, stay at homers. Welcome to Shea Aztec Dummy. Uh, those of you who are familiar with my videos will feel right at home. Those of you who are, who are first time visitors, look, take a look around, just don't touch anything. Um, today we are going to be tackling the uh, most primary, the most primal, the most basic of things, and that is how to Aztec a saucer. This is said saucer. Uh, saucer from the original pressing of the 350 refit and you can tell it's an original pressing because it's got these obnoxious holes in the bottom for the clear rods for the old-fashioned stand uh, but we're not gonna be dealing with that so uh, one of the first questions people usually get when they uh, uh, ask me when they find out what it is I do and I say well why do you do that you know what's the use of it and uh, I have to answer them one simple way it's like uh, I'm lazy. Uh, I like to, uh, I, I don't like to have to work hard. I'd rather work smart than to work hard. And uh, so it took me a little while to do it, but I came up with a way to uh, use vinyl templates to help paint the elaborate paint scheme that goes on the refit. Now this was long before the wallpaper decals came out. This is, uh, this this is like I said, first pressing time. This was 2004, 2005-ish. This is a while ago and um, uh, I thought you know well you know if I can make this easy on myself then uh, I'll enjoy it more and then it caught on here we are 15 years later going like gangbusters so here let's that's enough history let's get on to uh, dispelling the mystery for the nice rhyming there um, first thing we're gonna do is this Okay, and we're off we go. Um, I promise the rest of the uh, video will be on a tripod, but for this important step, I wanted to have the camera up in hand. Um, this is the first most important step. It is the foundation. It is the step beyond on which everything else rests, and that is wash your dishes and your saucers and everything else that gets paint on it. Um, the, the trick to making your paint stick is to have washed it and gotten the grease off of it and if it's like this wait, hear that if you can do that you've gotten the grease off of it now i you could use uh any basic brand uh degreasing dishwashing soap um you can if your sink is big enough mine is barely big enough to fit this thing in it uh, you could take it into the shower with you i won't judge um if you think that's what you need to do float it in the bathtub but wash it down good and get behind its ears, clean out all the nooks and crevices because that's where the paint goes as well. And then uh, let it air dry. You can, you know, help it along a little bit, but uh, dry it off. And uh, that is your first step to uh, a successful as ticking. OK, so presuming you've got your you've got your saucer washed and dried and it's squeaky clean. The next thing you want to do is put a good coat of primer on it. Now, I don't know where in your particular build this is going to happen because uh, are you lighting it? Are you adapting it? Are you cutting into it to, you know, make some kit, kit bashing? That's all on you. I am, uh, I am here to show you the basic procedure to how to, how to do this uh, and where you fit it into your build is your own business. I'm also not going to tell you what colors to use because I hate that. That's why I don't use the wallpaper decals. Why would I take somebody else's word for what colors my ship should be? I want to paint my ship my colors. And this is a reason that, that will allow you to do that. Um, so I need to get a coat of Duplicolor primer on this. I, Again, I'm going to tell you the colors I use. These are not the colors you must use, but they are indeed... Uh, the ones I think I've had the best success with and I'm gonna be trying something new on this one as well So we'll find out how well that will work But the process is the same no matter what colors you choose and I use I always use the uh, the primer sealer And I get a good good, good coat on that and it's gray now. Why, I know they make a white primer Why would I use a gray primer? Well, I want to use a gray primer for two reasons the gray primer does two things it light blocks 
but it also shows me every square inch of this. Now, because it's molded in white, if you put white primer over it, how do you know you've got everything covered? Well, to me, you don't, and I don't want to take that risk. So I can cover this with a, a, a gray coat of primer and then switch to a white primer after that. But at least I will know that way that every square inch of this has been covered with the primer. Alrighty then, uh, we are ready for the step two. I have let the uh, gray primer dry. I have wiped it down ever so lightly with a very high grit um, sanding sponge. Something I found at the uh, auto repair place. Which is a place where I get all of my uh, primers and my high grit sanding sponges and my Bondo and things like that. Don't uh, think you have to go and get all of your modeling supplies at a hobby store. That's just a... Uh, uh, I mean, it's convenient if you can find everything there, but learn to find supplies in other places because you'll not only save money, but you'll sometimes find better supplies. Um, so these have been wiped down. I'm going to uh, take a, uh, a towel and, and tack, you know, like a tack cloth and just wipe, well, get the dust off of them. And then we're going to do the first of two very light coats of white uh, sandable primer. All primer is sandable. I don't know why they call it that, but that's how I remember it. It's white primer, it's dupa color, it's sandable, it's a white sandable primer. Well, we're back. The, uh, the tops and the bottom of the saucer have had a chance to dry. This is two very light coats of the white primer on it uh, with a, you know, good time in between for it to dry. I always find it better to put two lighter coats on it than to try to get it all white uh, at one time with one coat because you end up really slamming the paint on there and it does nothing but goop up and look bad and run and all the things you don't want it to do. Okay, now the main goal of Aztecing this saucer is going to be to create basically a two-tone Aztec. A two-tone pattern of positives and negatives of light and shadow, of good and evil, however you want to phrase it, with some extra fun stuff thrown on top of it. But basically a two-tone a two uh, two -tone pattern. So uh, as the last thing to do for this first day, um, I'm going to put down the darker of the two. And when I say darker, I mean only by a kitten's hair is it going to be darker. Uh, it is, uh, what I'm using is Royal Light Gray, and I will mix this about uh, half and half with white to uh, get the, the gray that I'm going to use. And then once that has time to dry overnight, uh, we can get to, to the actual work of Azteking it tomorrow. So uh, really, I'm only interested in this area here between the outer band and the inner circle. Uh, because we will be painting a light color over top of all of this, which will be closer to white anyway. But this is the only real area that I'm interested on for the bottom and on the top. I want to stop pretty much. I'm not really interested in painting anything that happens on the bridge module or the A and uh, B and C deck. I'm more interested in keeping my work between this point and this point. So I've changed my mind. I went to a uh, a light gray and not the uh, not the royal not the royal light gray but the regular light gray because the royal light gray is a warm gray and the uh, XF66 light gray is a cool gray so uh, keeping it in that family of that tonal family okay this is a great spot to leave it overnight we'll come back to it tomorrow and you can only it's a very light gray and you should be only able to tell the difference between the color of the bridge module or the lower planetary sensor area which is still the original primer white okay so we're back at painting the saucer and this is such a big topic that i really don't know where exactly to begin so uh if i meander a bit i ask your forgiveness what i have here is a saucer with the uh primer on it and then i have uh the first light gray coat paint on it, first light gray top coat painted on it. Now, if you want to use my templates to simply make a two-tone uh, pattern, then all you would need to do at this point would be to pull out the masks and put down the Aztecing on here in a way that I will show in just a bit. 
and then put your lighter coat on top of that and that would your lighter coat would also include your outer perimeter and your bridge area again and then you pull those masks off and you've got a, a successful two-tone uh, two-tone uh, saucer and for I don't know 80% of the people 90% of the people that's what they're looking for and uh, that's what the that's what these masks are, are designed to get. It's basically a two-tone pattern. Now, those two tones can be any tones in the world. They can be black and white. They can be pink and purple, for all I care. They are your own choices. Some people have chosen to do it with a matte and a gloss, which is interesting. You want to use a, a, a flat white, and then you want to put the templates down and then spray a gloss white over it. And then when you pull them off, you get them difference between the gloss and them and the uh, flat. That's an interesting effect. Um, so you know, the, or you want to put a metallic coat over it. You can do a a white and then a uh, um, put the mask down and do an opalescent coat over that, and then just do those two colors. It, like I say, the world is your oyster as far as picking what two colors you want to use. What I am suggesting on this build, and what I'm going to show the t the uh, the procedure for, is for simulating, and I say simulating, the uh, pearlescent effects. Not going to do the full five color, whiz bang, flippy floppy, uh, you know, looks this way great, looks that way great, type of uh, um, paint scheme. But what I am going to do is a hybrid. It's going to be some of that with the two-tone effect. So what I have done at this point is I have created a pattern. This is just a pattern template. Um, it is generic. It is uh, not, well, it's random. It's actually got a pattern to it. But it is uh, going to be something that I'm going to put down on the hull, spray some color through, Pick it up, move it, spray some color through. Pick it up, move it, spray some color through. And then, after all of that has gone through, then I will put down my basic uh, Aztec pattern, which is the positive-negative two-tone effect that we've all come to know and love. Okay, for my example, I am going to be using these three things. These three things of Orient are. I'm going to be using the Neural Vallejo Color Shift. And one is called Blue, or Gold Pale Blue. One is called Old Gold Gray Violet. And the other is called Orange Violet. What I'd like to do is go ahead and put this template down, peeling it off of the paper, and uh, put it down onto, and I'm going to start right here. I'm just going to start right here up on this seam line. I'm going to try to bump it over top of the uh, phaser bump there. Now these don't have to be uh, elaborately exactly uh, placed because like I said it is a pattern and as a pattern it is going to fluctuate. So what I'm doing is just kind of laying it down, centering it so-so, centering it pretty well on the, uh, and it's, it's encompassing two uh, saucer sections, or two hull sections. I'm just going to make sure that that's laying down a little bit squarer than I had it. These will take a certain amount of abuse, lugging and tugging and pulling and twisting, but not a, a not a whole lot. So restrain yourself if you can. Okay, so there we go. I've got the the uh, violet orange paint in the brush. I am very lightly going over just some random spots not every single one of them not very heavy and then I'll move on to the next one the goal is you know by the time I'm done 
all of the uh, holes will be filled in but I'm trying to maybe do like a third of them in this color a third of them in this color and then a third of them in in this color so uh, I'm just picking out randoms and then we'll see how well it's going to uh, play out okay now I'm going over it with the uh, the violet the gold gray violet again very lightly I don't want to I don't want to plaster this and I'm trying to hit holes that I haven't hit with the uh, orange I'm doing this uh, every once in a while because I want to see on the vinyl where my holes are and where my uh, gaps in the color are so that I can add those. I think I've got enough purple on there now. And then the last one is the uh, pale gold pale blue. So I need to clean the brush out one last time. Switch over to that. Okay, so I've got all three colors down. I'm going to let this dry before I pick it up and move it. Um, I think I'm, I'm going to be happy with what I see, I think, once I get this off. Okay, I have removed all of the masks from this first level, and uh, one thing I can tell you is I want to do less purple next time. More, more of the uh, orange, more of the orange violet, less of the uh, gray violet. But uh, once you put it into the, we're trying to get it reflecting off of the lamp here. You can see. Uh, there you go. You can see it is giving the effect that you want. But knowing that, uh, yes, there's way too much purple there. But the purple is only seen at certain angles. This will be, this will be muted by what we end, what we do next, which will be uh, there's another first round here, and then there is the whole uh, regular Aztecing. So, yeah. That's going to get cut down a lot, and I think the lesson learned is less purple. Okay, so I've just used the same masks again. I've moved them over to the empty spaces, and it's time to spray the colors again, and this time with less purple. I have done the three colors on these set of wedges, so the only thing to do is to strip the tape back off of them, and... Uh, I'll probably let this, let this dry for a few minutes because I was a little heavier handed with the paint this time. So I'm going to uh, take the painter's tape off, but I will leave the vinyl down. And then uh, the next thing to do is to repeat this process on the bottom of the saucer. And uh, then we'll let that dry all night and come back tomorrow and put the primary um, positive and negative Aztecs down. And there you go. I uh, will do this in the lamp to uh, further point it out, but uh, there you can see what's happening in the off. There you go. Maybe that'll help right there. Look at this area right down here see there you can see all of the iridescent stuff that we're looking for now I've got the bottom of the saucer lined up and ready to go I've got all of my templates pulled weeded and ready to set down and uh, we're gonna do this basically the same way as we did the top now I got two uses out of the uh, ones on the top so I'm expecting to get at least two passes out of these out of these bottom ones as well there we go okay skip two and then go to the next one okay the uh, painters tape is down and I hope you can see that the fact that you put this painter's tape down around the edge will show you that you really don't have to go all the way out to the edge with the vinyl because you're going to end up taping it off anyway. So if it doesn't, you know, 
match the contours a thousand percent. It's no no big crime. Okay, so these are down. Just giving them a little finger rub there. Nothing dirty. Um, and I'm going to start again with the orange violet. Okay, the uh, bottom masks or the masks on the bottom of the saucer. The first wave of them have been removed, and uh, now it's time to let them rest for a bit to kind of go back into shape. And then I'll put them down on the, the open spaces, and that will do us for tonight, getting those last bits painted. Uh, and then uh, take them off and let everything rest overnight. Got the masks moved over. Uh, just took a couple minutes to do that. Ironically, these uh, go down easier the second time because that much more adhesive, or that much less adhesive is on the back. It's, it got peeled up from the first time, and it's easier to work with because it's not sticking on itself. So uh, quickly mask these off and start some painting. And here you can see the results of the day. I've got the uh, masks taken off and this is particularly what I'd like you to notice is when you hits the light how it makes the reflections and everything work. So um, this is going to set up overnight and uh, tomorrow we will put the actual uh, positive and negative Aztecs down. Okay, now is the time. We are going to actually, in excruciating detail, put down Aztecs on this saucer. Uh, as you can see, this is doing the exact right thing uh, when the light hits it. I'm not wild about how much purple I'm seeing. Uh, luckily, we're going to cover a lot of that up. Some of it will still show through in the final product, but we're the goal is to to not have so much of that at the end. So, uh, but this is doing the exact thing that I wanted to do. All righty. Anybody who's ever read any of my instructions, uh, and thank you if you do. I put a lot of time and effort into them. Uh, we'll see this. They're familiar with this uh, this chart, and what this is is the breakdown or the anatomy, if you will of a typical as section of Aztec uh, templates. Uh, on the sheet, it looks like this. It doesn't have the black lines in it. This is just for making it easier to see in the printing of it. Basically, what this does, what this means is, this one shape is going to yield two complete hull sections. And when I say hull sections, I mean, say, this, this right here is one hull section, and the one next to it is another hull section. So one, one uh, of these wedges will actually cover two sections of the ship. That's why you only get eight of these for the top and eight of these for the bottom. But there are 16 sections on the saucer. Because each one will give you two complete sections. And we're going to, like I said, we're going we're gonna to do this bit by bit to show you how that happens. Okay, I've got the camera all set up. Hopefully uh, all this will stay in frame. Um, I have pulled off the uh, backing material around the uh, templates. You normally will see a sheet like this and you'll be able to tell the top templates from the bottom templates because uh, well, they're not interchangeable. They look like they, they look like they might be, but they're not. they are subtle differences. So I will almost always well, I will always. I mean, if you catch me not doing it, I've made a mistake. Uh, putting a T on the sheet and a B on the other sheet, uh, and I try to and I keep the uh, the t the uh, top saucer templates all together. But that's what that T is for. That means top of the saucer. And what I've done is I've just removed the uh, material here around it to make it easier to see on camera. I don't always do that myself when I am doing this, but. I am trying to uh, make it clearer for those who might not be uh, as familiar with the process as I am. So once you've got the uh, extraneous vinyl removed, you um, you end up with this. This is basically it's the same size of this. It is the same thing. It's, now it's in camera. Um, and then we just start peeling off the pieces and laying them down. This is, uh, this is a blow-up from the instructions, but it also shows the checkerboard pattern. So if you hear me referring to the checkerboard pattern, this is what this means. You take the positive 
uh, Aztec pattern and you lay it out in a checkerboard pattern then you fill in with the smaller pieces or the negative pieces all right I think we're stalled long enough we're actually ready to start putting these templates down now it doesn't matter where you start I like starting straight up at the front you can start back here if you want if you can start on the other side I like to work on the front and and then kind of work my way around because we've got this natural obstacle back here that we need to cut around when we get to it but uh, for right now I like starting straight up front and the uh, method that I use may not you know your mileage may vary but this is how I prefer to do it I take the uh, the positive again the positive shape is going to be this right here it is this main little jumping man the Aztec man and the two boxes that go in the corner that constitutes the positive for this panel so I take my sheet that's got the uh, vinyl on it and again I'm going to do this in nauseating detail so I hope you have uh, made all of your bathroom breaks there we go there we go we've started first one is down in the corner ta-da and then we take the other one that goes in the other corner and the nice thing about it is, is that the panel lines are there the grid lines are there all you need to do is line them up and say okay that has to go in the corner where this panel line meets that so there are the top two corners now is where it gets a little dicier because you're trying to remove and on these uh, bigger template pieces it's a little more difficult you may find yourself uh, removing the negative shapes to make room which is completely acceptable but for the purposes of this demonstration I want to show you how what we've seen in the diagram relates to what is on the vinyl sheet okay so here's your positive of the uh, largest set of uh, largest set of Aztecs there that is the negative that is what's remaining on the sheet so we take the positive and it's this one is the floppiest because it is the largest and the legs are the floppiest on it I take my, my exacto knife attach it to the center there and then I kind of just lay them out on the center well and see he falls off and lay this down on the hull section where it's gonna eventually land and I center it and I make sure that the corners are you know the the uh, this last leg goes all the way out to the corner and I can see that I'm a little bit off center so I need to peel it up and move it sometimes I will start just by starting by lining up that bit in the corner of the uh, corner of the hull marking and then working working him all around now don't worry if these stretch a little bit out of shape they will bounce back there is a certain amount of give that the vinyl has but don't stretch it too far out of whack or else it will never recover the more you work with it the more you'll realize what those uh, what those limits are okay so there we go that's centered that's centered there you go he is centered in this pattern and you'll notice it's covering up a lot of your blocks from underneath that's gonna happen that's what's gonna give you the uh, the uh, additional layer of um, interference with the iridescent patterns so we've got the positives down on this particular hull section the negatives that are left on the sheet sorry the negatives that are left on the sheet they go on the next one over now depending on whether you want to move clockwise or counterclockwise it's up to you but once you start that pattern you need to keep to it so I'm gonna put the negatives on this section right here and then work my way up towards the uh, bridge so if the positives are here the negatives I want to go here 
Now I can line these up. These can always be picked up and repositioned slightly later if you find that something is not quite lining up. But I know that this bit of the uh, this bit of the vinyl mask right here, it has to line up with the empty space right next to it, like that. So it would fill in. Whereas this is a positive, this would be the negative shape, so it goes right there. I hope that I am explaining this in a way that is understandable. A lot of times it's easier to just do something rather than to explain what it is exactly I am doing. And of course, since I have been doing this for years, I know what I'm talking about. I may not be explaining it very well. So I hope that you will find uh, my email address. And if you have any questions, please let me know. So now we pick up this point, this particular piece. And we know that it has to line up as soon as I get it on, stay on the knife. This piece here, this edge and this edge, we know line up with the next hull section to the right of where we were. And again, this negative, or this positive, um, this is the negative shape, I'm sorry, but you can see the mirror, the mirror image there and how this gap here mirrors this piece here. So whereas this is filling in the negative shapes of the next one around. I'm going to shut up now because I'm even confusing myself and hopefully you will see as I progress how these patterns uh, actually once you know where your key registration points are you will see that these go down fairly easy and it's all because of the gridded nature of the saucer that I know that has to fit right there in that corner and then everything else is aligning the positive or aligning the shape with the the uh, the gap of the one next to it when you put these down you don't have to use a ton of pressure usually you know thumb tight I wouldn't take a card or anything and just burnish the heck out of it that's not going to get you anywhere but you, you know just put put it down enough that when you go to airbrushing it, it uh, won't blow off. There you go. See, that is the opposite of that. That is the negative version of that. So that is our first two hull sections down. And that, that came from all of these pieces here. So now we work our way up. And this is where that checkerboard pattern comes into play. Because just as I used the positive here... I wouldn't put the next positive there, sorry, doing camera, just as I use this can this uh, positive here, the next positive wouldn't go there, the next positive would go here, and it would go here, here, back and forth in this checker pattern, and what I'll do for the rest of, um, the rest of this section, I was going to go ahead and put the positives down, so you can see that checkerboard pattern in play, then I could fill in with the negatives. And this need not take all day to do. I've gotten pretty good at it over the years, but I can understand where a beginner might take a bit of time to get used to it. That's why I rarely do it on camera, because it can be a bit, I don't want to say redundant, but it can be, get a bit monotonous to... Uh, watch somebody else putting these on and you'll notice that the smaller the pieces get the easier they are to handle these big ones particularly of the bottom two are uh, big and floppy and that's because of the size of them but this is the positive and again you can start on in the center or you can start You can start um, 
at one side and work left to right. I like starting in the center because if there's any trimming that needs to be done, I can trim it equally from the right and the left. Because sometimes you will have a little bit of trimming where you've not quite laid it down exactly right or it's overlapping or just because you might want to. So it's easier to lay it down in the center and then you trim easy, uh, evenly from both sides. Now this happens to look good, so there's no trimming needed. But now I can put in the uh, negative shapes. As soon as I get it back off. The, uh, that's the thing with a, you start with a very sharp exacto blade and sometimes it can work against you. Now this is going to go here, line up. Well, as long as I am hitting both of the corner or both of the walls that I need to hit, I know it's going to follow the arc just the right way. You probably didn't expect to be hearing me talking as much during all this, did you? There we go. A very sharp exacto blade will get caught up in the paper. There you go, that's the two down. Now see, now that I've got one next to it, I might see that this leg here needs a little bit of adjustment. And that's why you peel some stuff up and you can move it around and you can tease it back into shape and make it line up. You can work that curve and make it line up a little bit better. But there you go. That's two of them. Just that quick. And we follow the same procedure the rest of the way. Now, positive, positive, next positive would go here. There's that checkerboard pattern again. And like I say, the more you do this, the, the more confident you will come to do it. I have gotten to the point now where I don't, rather than doing one whole one, I will just go ahead and do both of them side by side at the same time because I know how they need to fit and it also helps me get the vinyl off of the paper if I am not trying to get the you know not trying to pull out just the positives Here's that big shape from the, uh, you got to be careful, this, this stuff doesn't happen. You don't want them getting stuck to each other, or stuck to themselves. Okay, so positive goes here. Excuse me. I'd have to edit that one out. Next one up would be up here.
I'm not really worried about sticking that one in position because it's going to have to be uh, moved around to line up with subsequent parts. So uh, I'm just getting it off of the paper at this point. This is the big guy here. That one's coming up a little bit short, and I also noticed that this one needs to be realigned. Okay. This one, this was the one earlier, and it should. As long as it comes over and touches the end of the hull plate, or the hull section, we're good. Okay, positive here. Next positive goes up here. Now, on the next round, we're going to have these phaser banks to cut out around, but that's, when we get to that, uh, we'll, I'll show you how to treat that. Put it in these corners. See, it's, I always find it easier to work from the corners down, because the corners are never going to change. As long as you line up on those, everything else is adaptable. And after a while, it really does become second nature that you know where these patterns are going to fall because you'll see that there are secondary things that line up. Like this shape here, the shape here is always going to be on the same line as that, which is always going to be on the same line as that. You know that this line here and this line here are, are aligned. So once once that is uh, in the right place, you'll you'll know, and it really it becomes second nature to the point where you can spot where something is off just by uh, just by feel. That's gonna have to be that's not its final place yet. So now we pull off the full positive, and like I said, once you get smaller, they become a lot easier to work with. And this guy goes here. Center them on the, the hull section. You take out the wrinkles. You might do a little stretching if you need to. But see, now I can see that this edge has to fall into that gap. And this one is... That also needs to be a, uh, moved around a little bit, but we won't know for sure until we put this section on here so all I'm really worried about is getting this and this lined up getting the getting those edges to meet okay so we're on the last section here and since we've gone uh, positive 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 the next positive goes over there so corner Corner. And this one goes to that corner. This one goes to that corner. That one fills in there. And you can see we're almost done with two sections, and it's only a few minutes to do this. Now, of course, I could have gone a little quicker if I wasn't explaining every step, but uh, I also want to make sure I am taking my time and explaining everything. Uh, once I finish this, I'll just zip through the rest of it. Um, and uh, like I said, this can take as long or as short as you as you want it to do. I actually think of it as a fairly good zen experience i can just put on some nice tunes and 
and get the sheet of vinyl out and kind of zone out while I'm doing it and uh, it becomes a meditative experience. And don't be wildly excited if it doesn't come all the way to the edge because you'll make up for it in other areas on the paint job. But see, now I can see that once that is down, that this has to be moved a tiny smidge. And here's where we come to that phaser bank. For this to be in place, it sits like that. And it's best to take the uh, take the vinyl, push it down around your raised area, and then just simply take your sharp exacto and cut out that area that uh, to cut out the phaser bank. Push it in place, press it down, maintain the pattern, and then trim it out with the exacto. The only thing left to do is this area up in here. And because that doesn't have, um, there's no grid lines or anything, you're kind of on your own as, a, as to assigning positives and negatives. I use this, uh, this shape here. I've identified this as the positive. So it would go, it would go here. And it only lines up with the parts below it and then kind of aims itself towards the bridge deck. So if that's the positive, then this becomes the negative and all you really have to go on is lining it up with the circumference here, the circle here, and kind of eyeballing the, uh, the straight line, eyeballing the line that goes all the way up straight from this edge because there's no grid line there and then you just fill in with these remaining pieces and you you uh, kind of look at the one next to you look at the one next to it and kind of imagine what the negative space of that would look like and That kind of fits in like this. Now, actually, I have made a mistake here. I made a mistake when I put this piece down. Because this piece should line up with the edge. And I lined it up with the front. So it should, it should line up with this edge. And I centered it by mistake. So that should actually move over, which means... This panel now moves over. That's why I said about this is a little bit tougher of an area because you don't have as many grid lines as you do. But see, I can kind of imagine this straight line here going all the way up and that lining up against that straight line. This was a cut, this is a crooked piece of paper, so it doesn't look good. If I had a a straight edge. One second, I'll be right back. Sorry, put squeaky chair. You pick, you take a straight edge and you line it up against that, and that gives you that edge. And then you take the straight edge here, and you line it up, and then you that follows that edge. So here is two sections of hull, uh, Aztec in a few minutes, using one complete one complete wedge so let me uh, let me continue the rest of the top of the saucer and the next stage you will see is me getting ready to paint just wanted to shake things up a little bit show you the uh, maybe this might be more clear to you uh, the next two sections I did just by putting the positives down and here you can see that checkerboard that I was talking about full uh, positive here positive and back and forth and back and forth until you get to the top and that leaves me with the negative shapes on this piece of uh, vinyl. So now I can fill those in to that area. You can do it the way I did it. You can do it this way if it helps you see the pattern better. And then fill in. Or you can do it the way I do uh, when I am um, in a hurry. 
And sometimes I'll go all the way, I'll take all the sheets and I'll do the whole one all the way around and then start and do this and then go all the way around just to break it up. But I wanted you to see the benefits of both because now you've got, by putting the positives down, which you know fill the entire hull section, then you know that the uh, negatives, you can see better where to slot those in. So it, it's six of one, half dozen of the other to me, but you might find a method that you like better. Yeah, I've continued work around the uh, port side of the saucer, and I'm to this point here, and I wanted to show you what happens when you have to trim out around the impulse deck here. What I have found the best thing to do is simply continue with the pattern as it lays and lay down I've put everything in here other than the pieces that are directly affected and uh, now we come to this one this piece here the main the main guy the positive man he would normally lay just like this so at this point what I would do is lay this down as flat as possible and work it into the edges and then simply take the exacto knife and cut it off where it hits the obstruction of the impulse deck. There you go. Now there's a tiny little bit in this spot right here that I would need to replace. I'm just going to eyeball that. There you go. I just cut off the parts of that that I didn't need and eyeballed that tiny little corner. This tiny little corner here. And now I'll work my way back down the, uh, the hull. Like this whole corner, nothing gets interrupted, so we're great with it. And then I can put these two people, people, these two little squares where they need to go. Now this, because I can't see this corner anymore, I am going to eyeball in relation to the other parts that I can see. And cut that off, just like that. And then that, that pattern continues into the corner there. And let's see, the next piece would be, would be that one. And the next one starts, you'll see the very beginning of it. So I would eyeball that one and slice off the bit that I don't need. There you go. And we just continue our working our way down. There we go, that's one half of the top saucer done with the last bit here, and that is to quickly uh, cut these where they start going climbing up the wall of the AB deck, leaving just the parts that we want to leave. There you go. So now we just need to do this basically form three more times for this side and both sides of the bottom. There you go, one fully Aztec saucer top. Now this did take a couple three hours to do, but uh, easily doable in an afternoon sitting. And now we're going to start on the bottom saucer, the saucer bottom. Um, and uh, it's it's same basic procedure as the top, there's no surprise there. But you'd make sure that you don't mess up the uh, Aztecs between the top and the bottom because the contours are slightly different. So uh, that's why I put them on separate sheets and mark mark them with a B and mark you know, keep them separate. But the bottom has one thing going for it that the top doesn't. And that is, or those are, all of these access plates. Um, they are, like, there's four quadrants, uh, you might even think they're landing gear covers. They could be, or they could be docking port covers, like uh, uh, the access cover that Spock comes out uh, of the uh, bottom of the saucer in the motion picture. Either way, 
a lot of people, and I tend to agree with a lot of people, and this is the one rare instance where I do agree with a lot of people, uh, think that those shouldn't be Aztec, that they are solid individual plates by themselves and shouldn't have any Aztec on it. So what I do is, um, like I did with the um, impulse deck on the top, is that I will go ahead and template all over them, but then I will cut them out so that they are a solid, uh, they end up being a solid color rather than being, you know, chopped up with the Aztec pattern. Okay, so the first wedge is down on the bottom of the saucer, and I have decided that in order to uh, not lose myself in the pattern, I want to go ahead and cut these out uh, while, I am, while I am thinking of it, and that means this, this, oops, push that down so I can see the edges of it. So now we have all those panels trimmed out, and I'll just remember to do that on the other ones as I run across them. But uh, the bottom, to me, is actually a little bit easier to do because of the, the slope of it. You could actually get a, a better groove, I think. But your mileage, as I say, may vary. Uh, so here you go. I've got the saucer, bottom of the saucer, half done. And you can see how I trimmed out around the panels that I wish to keep a constant color. And uh, I'm going to stretch my legs and take a break. It's important in between these things, you know, to get up there and rest your eyeballs and, and uh, you know, stretch your neck and take a break. This has all been done within uh, a few hours. I'm still on Saturday afternoon. Um, which is how I'm spending my Saturday afternoon with a with a uh, as taking a saucer. So to let you know, you don't have to do this all in one day, but it is certainly a doable thing to do it all in one day. Alrighty, so I've got one section left and uh, on the bottom of the saucer, and since I showed you in excruciating detail how I did the first section, I think it's only fitting. It's symmetrical. It's got a certain poetry to it that I show you how I do the bottom, do the last one. And uh, I am not going to give commentary. I'm just going to run straight through so you can see it. I'm not going to try to set any land speed records, but uh, I'm going to show you pretty much uh, the speed at which I do these. I'm just going to go through, and like I said, not... Well, here I am talking about how I'm not going to be talking about it. And I'm trying not to rush because, just because the camera's on, but... Actually, this piece doesn't bother going on at all because there's a there are, are two hatches there that will be completely uh, one color, so there'll be no no reason to do that. And let's see, I need this piece then. Move down to the next one. Actually, should have thought, see, when to make sure I am in camera, and I am.
to resist the temptation to uh, run any speeded up music or anything behind this. Now, normally when I am doing this, I do have either a movie playing in the background or uh, some relaxing music, but because I am shooting a video right now, I have turned that off so as not to incur the wrath of anybody who wants money for a copyright. So you just have to listen to me running my mouth instead of some pleasurable music. And here I'm just cutting out the bits that overlap this panel. Some of these want to go down crooked. You just pick them up and straighten them out. As I've said before, don't be afraid to pick up and adjust these pieces if you, uh, by the time you get to the one that goes next to it, you might realize that you had put one down crooked. So I always use the, the positive shapes to give me my alignment for the negative shapes. Oops, i got to cut that off. Oh, we're coming down to the last ones, kids. And this is it. This is the last, the last shape. Oh, and I've got some stuff stuck on the back of it. I had to go and head jinx myself. Okay, this is the last one. Yeah, I 
little bit of trimming because it's running a little long here. Don't be afraid to trim some of these off if they run a little bit big or patch them in if they run a little bit short. And there you go. There is one happy completed bottom of the saucer. And um, yes, it's slow going. It can be tedious. It can be mind numbing. But there is something very satisfying about having a well, a well Aztec saucer. And here is the top to go with it. So you take the top, you take the bottom. You've got two very well Aztec saucers. And now we're ready for the to cover it all up with white paint. You'll notice that we have covered up a lot of the uh, iridescent paint that we put on here last time. And that's, that's the goal. I mean, you are creating or you're introducing random elements. Or a, I'm sorry, you're introducing a structured pattern over top of random elements. So you're going to get a more randomized version of your iridescence because of the very thing you just did. So there you go. Next step is to top coat it.